So there's this ongoing debate about should horror movies be PG-13 or R? Can you make a good PG-13 horror movie? Yes, but some movies need to be rated R. Truth or dare. Truth or Dare stars Lucy Hale, Tyler Posey, and is directed by Jeff Wadlow. What's up, guys? If you remember, a few months ago, I did a trailer reaction for Truth or Dare. My response to that was not that good, mainly because of the stupid faces they make in this trailer, and it really turned me off, but part of me was thinking the premise itself could be interesting. Can the face get in the way of the whole movie? And the answer to that is not necessarily. And before I get into this, I actually wanted to give a shout out to my wife. She's been on like a acrylic painting binge lately. She's been painting a lot of stuff. I've been posting some of her work on Instagram, on Facebook. You can see some of it right here. But um, she's getting a lot of positive feedback, which is really cool. She does not have any kind of social media whatsoever. She's just one of those type of people. She hates social media. Uh, but the response has been so strong for her paintings that um, we're considering some options. But yeah. Anyway, um, yeah, just thank you guys for the great response to her work. It really means a lot to her. But first off, let's get into a quick plot synopsis. This movie opens up with our main character, Olivia, played by Lucy Hale. Uh, she's actually going to go do some work for Spring Break for Habitat for Humanity, which made me happy because my previous job was working with Habitat for Humanity, and I miss working with those fine people uh, in Georgia. I tell you, I had so many great memories, helping a lot of families, you know, building houses, working with the community. Uh, and it was nice to see that little touch at the beginning of the movie. It harkened back to some great memories. But instead of going to help out Habitat, her friends actually talk her into going to Mexico for spring break. Uh, and they, you know, they get down to Mexico, they have their fun, they do what young people do. But then this strange character comes upon Olivia and asks her to come to this a uh, place called The Mission, uh, which is this strange underground, like, cavern-type environment. And you see, like, all these old relics and everything there. It, it's an interesting place to, uh, to, I guess, for young people to hang out. You know, when we were kids, we liked hanging out in these type places. But they decide to play Truth or Dare. And then things start getting grim because Carter tells uh, Olivia that, hey, you are in the game now. You have to play the game. Uh, and if you refuse to play the game, you die. Carter! Truth. What are your intentions with our sweet Olivia? I needed to find someone with friends that I could trick into coming here. I could tell Olivia was an easy target. I brought you all up here because I'm okay with strangers dying if it means I get to live. And so throughout the rest of the movie, her and her friends are playing truth or dare. And havoc ensues. And let me just say, there was a lot of uh, promise to this, actually. Because that scene when they're in the mission, um, up to that point, I wasn't really interested. I wasn't uh, invested in these characters. And then, once they start playing the game in the mission, and they realize that uh, this is real, it gets pretty intense, actually. And so I thought, hey, this might actually be pretty decent. Uh, it sets itself up for some, maybe some really nice kills down the line. And uh, that's, we're going to get into the cons. So, but first, let's talk about some things that I did like about this movie. As I've said, the premise actually was pretty interesting. Um, I like that at the beginning of the movie, I wasn't caring about the characters at all. But they focused on Olivia Markey and Lucas. There's kind of a love triangle going there. It does get a little bit soap opery, but it's, it's important to the plot that's going on, to how things play out. And especially the relationship between Marky and Olivia. I was actually buying into the drama that was going on between these two girls. Uh, and there is one scene where they both give really great performances. Olivia has to, you know, unveil a secret that she never wanted to let her know that involved her father. And they both had to give some pretty strong emotional performances during that scene. And that was pretty good. So... I thought that I was not going to care about any of these characters, and I ended up caring about at least those two. And I was interested in the uh, this demon spirit that released this spell onto this game in the mission. You know, there's a lot of interesting elements there that you could explore, even in like future movies down the line. This movie really sets itself up to be like a Final Destination type of film. But now that leads us into the cons of this movie. Holy crap. My biggest thing is, and I talked about in the in the intro, P 
PG-13 and R. There's been debates about this on Killer Flicks. You know, somebody says, you can make a great horror film that's PG-13. And you can. Some premises are fine for PG-13, like A Quiet Place. I just saw A Quiet Place. Fantastic, very well-directed film. But a movie like this, where the kills are kind of a big deal, um, you want it to be R, because every time there was supposed to be a kill in this movie, they really had a chance to shine. It could have gotten really creative, really fun, but instead, I don't remember hardly any blood whatsoever. I think there might have been a little, but uh, I can't remember a great kill at all in this movie. And the only one that's halfway decent is the pool table kill, and they show that in the trailer. And it's it, even, even that is pretty damn tame compared to even the least kill in the Final Destination franchise. So I think some horror movies have to be rated R. They just have to, to be, to be great. This was not that at all. The PG-13 really just watered down this movie uh, exponentially. And Happy Death Day is a great example of that too. That movie should have been rated R. I know a lot of people liked that movie. I didn't like it because it felt so watered down. It, it reached its high point in the middle and then it just kind of lost me the rest of the way. Also, let's talk about that stupid face that we saw in the trailer. Now, it's not as bad as I thought it was gonna be. Uh, the first time we do see that face in the movie, I was like, oh God, here we go. Please don't tell me that's going to be throughout this whole movie. And I think they kind of toned it down a bit for the rest of the movie. But what they should have done was just focused on the eyes because most of the time the eyes were red. So I think if they would have had just maybe a stoic type face or just something that's a little bit more cryptic instead of that stupid CGI Joker look. You know, it looked like something off of Snapchat, and it was stupid. I don't know why they did that. And it, every time that stupid face would grace itself on the screen, it just took me right out of the movie. It looked like a computer-generated effect. And it makes me miss horror movies that came out in the 80s uh, when they didn't depend on CGI because they didn't have it back then. So they would make creepy faces with, you know, practical effects. And it just worked better. I'm not saying you always have to do that. Um, you know, sometimes CGI works great. You just have to know when it works correctly. And also, this movie just feels so bland. The characters are bland for the most part. Uh, the music feels like music that you would hear in maybe an after-school special. Nothing really jumps out at you, you know? And so it just was a waste of time, really. That's what this movie was. It was just a big waste of time. For a rating, I will give it a two hours lost, really. I thought about maybe giving it a low humdrum uh, because there was some fun to be had. But at the end of it, if I didn't see this movie ever, it would have been a better thing. So, yeah, I'm just giving it a two hours lost. So, anyway, guys, what are your thoughts on Truth or Dare? Post in the comments. Let me know. Also, be sure to come over to Killer Flicks, where we talk horror all day and every day. And on Fridays, we do Free Fall Fridays. And speaking of Killer Flicks, if you are a member, I did post this on Killer Flicks the other day. Um, we do non-horror posts every now and then if it's not Friday. You know, sometimes the occasion calls for it. It might be like Star Wars. It might be Marvel. Sometimes, you know, if it's a hot button thing, then we, we, we allow it. But sometimes people just get way too out of hand with it, like... What's your favorite Coldplay song? And, and they drop it on like a Tuesday or something like that. And it just gets annoying after a while. So I did, I did post something on there saying, hey, this is a horror group. We do have fun on Fridays when we talk about everything. But for the most part, outside of that, we like to keep it horror. But anyway, guys, follow me at Drum Drums on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Letterboxd, and now Stardust. If you like what I'm doing, hit that subscribe button. I'd really appreciate it. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching. Have a great day and Drum Drum out.